Welcome to Sweet Valley Diaries Extra Drama for book number 20, Crash Landing! Exclamation point! Woohoo! Hey, I'm here again with Lauren Shippen. I am Marissa Flaxbart. And I'm Lauren Shippen. And I'm Marissa Flaxbart. <laughs> uh, so we've been talking about Crash Landing, book number 20 mm-hmm. in the Sweet Valley High series. Um, Lauren, you created a universe of some high schoolers, not all, but yes. a few high schoolers and some other adults um, that is maybe the opposite of Sweet Valley, California. <laughs> yeah, that's that's very possible. Yeah. I was thinking about it, and it's just like you take uh, mental health so seriously mm-hmm. that it is actually kind of the structure of the whole show. Yeah. Because there's, a, you know, the therapist, Dr. Bright. Yes. So the Bright Sessions, the show that I make, is about people with supernatural abilities and therapy. And so a lot of the show is actually therapy sessions. Sometimes on uh, the show we talk about how great it would be if... Uh, there was more therapy in Sweet Valley, California. Some people really need it. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And also, just if trauma doesn't really exist that much in Sweet Valley, people, mm-hmm. like, Enid is going to be over this whole situation with George, like, now. Like, she right. was basically over it at the end of the book. Yeah. And trauma is taken very seriously in on Bright Sessions. Yeah. It's one of the things I really like about it. Thanks. Is that there are whole storylines where, you know, something happens that another... You and I have talked about it a little bit before, I think. Mm-hmm. Something happens that some other kind of TV series might just write off. It's like, well, you know, sometimes there's a fight. Yeah. And it ends up becoming a, a thing that drives the sort of, like, emotional arc for, mm-hmm. for characters. Um, so trauma is very real in yeah. your universe. And, oh, there's lots of representation. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, especially of, um, uh, like, different, like, sexualities mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and lots of different... Um yeah, mental health sort of states of being and and all that kind of stuff. Yes. So yeah. I appreciate that as a listener. Thanks. You know, there's room for both Sweet Valley and uh, the Bright Sessions in this world. Absolutely. The, the spectrum of entertainment yeah. is broad. <laughs> um, Sweet Valley High would be less uh, entertaining if it were not a like historical nostalgic artifact, I think. Yes. I would be a little bit more, like, scoffy about the whole thing than I am. Well, and also I think that Sweet Valley is, like, I mean, with Bright Sessions... There's obviously the element of, like, okay, these people have supernatural abilities, and so we're living in a world that is unlike our own. And so everything else, other than the supernatural abilities, I try to keep really, really grounded in reality. Whereas, like, Sweet Valley takes place in our reality, but, like, everything is heightened. That's a good point. You know, otherwise. It's a fantasy. Like, yeah, it's a fantasy. Like, no person's high school experience is this dramatic this consistently, right? Like... That that's insane. Like nobody's had this experience. You mean that like most high schoolers don't like rescue their sister from being almost stabbed by a guy who was pretending to be a rich son escaping from his parents, but really he is like, like a, a drug dealer, he's like a druggy, like uh, Doctor Jekyll, Mister Hyde kind of personality split person who whose family all was killed in a boat accident, and then as soon as you get to the police station, you find out that your best friend is in a plane crash. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's like that that happens to all of us like once or twice, but not on like a <laughs> weekly basis, yeah. right? And this was probably only a few weeks after you were kidnapped. Exactly. It's like it's like Riverdale. I don't know if you watch Riverdale on the CW. Okay. I love that show. When I first turned on Riverdale, yeah. I was instantly like, fuck. Like this is how you would have to There's never going to be a Sweet Valley High TV show now. I mean, there was already a Sweet Valley High TV show, but Amazing. new Sweet Valley like yeah. this is how you would have to do it. Yeah. Because it's it's perfect to take the perfect world and twist yeah, it. and you have to and when you, when you have to make it ridiculous, you know, and it's like nobody is watching Riverdale hopefully and being like, oh, this is what high schooler is experience in America. Like at one point in the premiere of this season, a a, a, a teenage girl shoots somebody with an arrow while she's wearing a bikini and Daisy Dukes and a leather jacket, and like she shoots a member of a gang through the shoulder with an arrow. And it's like, that's not, that's never happened in the history of the world, right? (laughs) It's amazing. But like, I, and that's, it's a soap opera, right? It's like a Mm -hmm. heightened soap opera. And so like Sweet Valley, I think can be like a kind of ridiculous because it's like in that Riverdale vein of like being a teen soap. Sweet Valley Riverdale mashup is really, really easy to imagine for me. 
What about a Sweet Valley Bright Universe mashup? Well, it's interesting because I just, one of our main characters in the podcast is this boy named Caleb. He's uh, 17 years old. Love Caleb. He's a fan favorite. Caleb is my favorite, actually. (laughs) A lot of people love him. He's played by one of my best friends, Brigham Snow. Um, And he has um, an empath ability. And so he feels the feelings of everybody around him. And he's Mm -hmm. kind of this, like, very macho high school jock who feels feelings for everyone around him and ends up falling in love with a, spoilers, but, like, in in the first, like, three episodes, you you know that he's going to fall in love with this guy, Adam. And uh, I actually have a book coming out uh, next year that is about their love story and them falling in love. And I just turned in the second draft a couple weeks ago. And that all takes place. It was it was interesting to write because it's like all takes place basically in their high school. Um, and so it yeah. it was like interesting reading this and kind of like the high school experience and in, in like prose and sort of how you build out that. Um, and certainly it is not as dramatic as a uh, as Sweet Valley is, and there are also <laughs> a lot less people. Like there are other characters that our audience hasn't met yet in this in this book, but like. Sweet Valley, I feel like every third page, there's like, oh, you know, so-and-so, this person, you know, and it's like, I I get that it's a big universe, and so you kind of have, like, all these disparate people, Um, but it was hard to keep track of, like, all the various cute boys who were kind of, like, sweet but dull. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, and they're all, in the last episode, my guest Mark was observing that it was hard to keep track of them because the only real difference between them seemed to be their hair color. Yes, 100%. (laughs) (laughs) Um, They were all just, like, suntanned and handsome. Unless they're nerdy and weird, you know. I don't even know. It says in this past book that Jessica, like, would never forget George Warren's car. And I was like, did, how did we even know what George's car looked like? Yeah, the the, the sort of attention to detail is very interesting. Um, But yeah, so I've been trying, I was, as I was reading, I was, like, trying to picture Caleb and Adam in this high school. Oh my gosh. I don't think they'd survive, man. I don't think so either. (laughs) Well, can you, poor Caleb, can you imagine him? God, the drama. (laughs) But you know what? Um, Yeah, like, you drop Caleb. I was, see, I was thinking about it a different way. I was thinking about, like, oh, well, what if the characters of Sweet Valley had some sort of special powers? I don't even want to imagine that. The the, the um, havoc that they could wreak. Yeah, um, um, if they were atypical. Yeah. But thinking about poor Caleb in one of these rooms, like, it, being next to Enid when she's going through oh, God. this, like, he would just, like, crumble, right? Yeah. They'd ha- you'd have to, like, for his own health, like, take him away. It'd be so awful. And just, like, the constant, like, just cold shouldering and, like, all of this stuff and just, like, guilt. And, I mean, he'd be feeling, he'd yeah, he'd be a mess. I do think that he would be helpful in the Jessica and Wakefield family storyline, though. Yes. Because I think that he could just, like, walk into the space and be like, oh, man, there's some, you know, heat here. Yeah, <laughs> there's, there's some, some red or whatever. Yeah, some, like, bad juju <laughs> going on. Because, um... I think that the Wakefields have this impression that Jessica is just being her usual moody self. Right. Because she does, she's very dramatic. She's melodramatic. But what's happening with Jessica is not that she's being melodramatic, it's that she's genuinely hurt. And that's a different feeling. Yeah, and like she's feeling unloved by her parents, which is like a really rough thing, right? Yeah. Oh, and also really having empath abilities would have cleared things up uh, or forced things to be cleared up between George and Enid really quickly. Too. Definitely. Yeah. George was operating from a place of like only guilt. Yeah. For yeah. Most of the book. And and yeah, I think that, you know, Caleb can provide some clarity. I it's it it's honestly chilling to me to think of like Elizabeth or Jessica having abilities. <laughs> Cause it's like what, what what could they possibly do? I mean they would be they they already create so much drama that it's like you <laughs> added a supernatural ability to that and it would just be complete chaos. Well, you know what? The way the book describes Jessica most of the time, maybe not this book specifically, mm-hmm. but Jessica is usually described as having a kind of a superpower, mm. which is that she can wrap men around her finger. Yeah. So she's a master manipulator and she's very proud of it. And you know what? I think that if we thought of it as a superpower, it would bear out. She gets angry when it doesn't work. Ooh. She gets really frustrated. Yeah. And she either, like, amps it up, like, it works even harder, or she, like, writes that boy off forever. Interesting. Um, And then Elizabeth, most of the time, is a very empathetic person. Yeah. Um, But she does something that I think is similar to what Caleb does, which is that she sort of, like, sucks it in and lets it... And, like, lets it fester. Yeah. In fact, when she found out about George and Robin in the last book, she could hardly sleep. Like, she was Mm. really... Uh, she keeping the secret, but also just knowing about, like she understood, what, like she had a hard time being angry at George and Robin, right. 
but she felt so bad for her friend, and yeah. all of those mixed emotions were really um, making her act moody and depressed. Yeah, yeah, that's it. that's interesting. It's like if yeah, if Elizabeth's the the Caleb, and Jessica's the Damien, and it's like they are sort of like two halves of, of mm, a whole, right? Yeah. And what's weird about this book is that I don't think that those things come through, right? It's like Elizabeth's the one manipulating Enid in this, like constantly. Oh my gosh, yeah. And then Jessica like is actively just trying to make people like her through like action versus like emotional manipulation. Like she's she's like trying to cook a nice dinner for her parents and she's, you know, trying to to um I guess that's the only nice thing she's trying to do. I she's trying to like be a good student for John Pierre so that she he will like her. You've hit on something that I think is really significant though in terms of why Jessica seems different in this book. It's because we almost never see her interact with her peers. Mm. We, when she is interacting with her peers at school, she's awful in her normal Jessica self. Right. She she is mean to them. She's um, conniving. Yeah. And she's really snide. Yeah. When she's interacting with her family, which is what she's doing mostly here, we're seeing much more of a longing yep. to be seen and accepted. It's a different Well, that's thing. probably why she lashes out at school. You know? Like, I I feel really bad for this girl. I feel like... Don't make me feel for Jessica. <laughs> I feel like, God, the right person just intervenes in this situation now and Jessica could turn into a really good person. Whereas it's like, I think it's harder if you're just, if you're somebody who's just like praised constantly for being amazing when you're a teenager, you could end up becoming like a pretty damaging adult because you don't think that you, there's consequence for your actions, you know? Because mm-hmm. um, like there isn't consequence for any of Elizabeth's actions and that's a dangerous thing. Right. Um, Instead, the like the craziest thing that she does in this book is the thing that gets her most lauded. Yeah. Like the the thing that I would love to see, I think, in terms of like a Sweet Valley TV show would be like Sweet Valley ten years later. You know, like what are these people like when they're in their late twenties? Oh, you know, well, it just so happens that Sweet Valley ten years later is a thing that exists. Uh, it is a book on my bookshelf and the oh title my God. of the book is Sweet Valley Confidential. Ten years later. Amazing. Uh, if you do an episode on that, can I please be the guest for it? Because I would love to see these people ten years from now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think it might have to be a roundtable. And that yes, episode is definitely coming at some Amazing. point. Oh, oh my god. Lauren, thank you so much. This thank- is so much fun to think about. So much fun. Book 20 is the uh, finale of season two of the Sweet Valley Diaries podcast. So we'll be back after a a short hiatus with season three. Um, So it'll be a little bit of a wait for book number 21. Runaway, right? Book number 21 is called Runaway. Uh, Would you care to tease us? Yes. Jessica embarks on a desperate course of action in Sweet Valley High number 21, Runaway. Yes. And the, the 20 ends, Crash Landing ends in such a way where she's like... Jessica is having another, like, fight with her parents, basically, and and saying, all you guys do is is pick on me, and then her dad's like, I didn't mean to upset you, blah, 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 Um, and Jessica basically thinks to herself, okay, I have to get the attention of of my family, and I have to make them, you know, realize Mm -hmm. that I'm a human being, and so suggesting that she runs away in Mm -hmm. book 21. Listeners, uh, make sure that you're subscribed to Sweet Valley Diaries um, wherever you subscribe to podcasts. That way, uh, when the hiatus is over, which should be um, early 2019, um, you'll get the new episodes right away and you don't have to keep track. Also, during the break, as uh, between the last season break, we'll definitely have at least one, if not more, bonus episodes where we take a look at the next special edition. Um, we'll see what else we can come up with. Uh, until then, uh, sweetvalleydiaries.net is the website. Uh, you could read super old blog posts for when I, I've been writing about this stuff since 2006. So wild. Uh, so you could read my my young 20s person takes on uh, these books. <laughs> they haven't changed that much over the years, but I don't usually go back and consult the original blog post before the podcast episode, sometimes after. And uh, follow me on Instagram at Sweet Valley Diaries or on Twitter at Sweet Valley. And send me an email telling me how much you miss me, Sweet Valley Diaries at me.com. Thanks again, Lauren. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Cool. Amazing. Listeners, uh, I don't know what I have to say. (laughs)
I haven't really thought it through. Yeah, that's fair. 